Considering its impact on every citizen in the country, it is not surprising that the theme of war and conflict has been a regular feature in the cinematic creations of a generation of Sri Lanka's filmmakers. While the majority of these films focus on the social and cultural environment of the Sinhalese community, a few have been more controversial than others, either drawing heavy censure or even being banned from public screening. Some have been criticized for being anti-patriotic, while others have been accused of just the opposite. In our final story this week, we take a closer look at this particular trend in Sinhala cinema. The action takes place in the jungles of Topigala in eastern Sri Lanka. The story centers around two men, a major and a soldier of the Sri Lankan army, who meet in the jungle when their camp is overrun by the LTTE. <coughs> the soldier risks his own life to remain with the wounded major, who eventually succumbs to his injuries, triggering a personal journey of exploration in the life of the young soldier. Right, cut. Okay. It's, uh, 22, 30 years we have experienced violence, war, terrorism, uh, so many disturbances in our country. So it uh, gives me a lot of uh, bad, bad feelings and hurt. it hurts me. Sound. Right. Sound. Camera. End again. End up. End up. Ah, action. I thought I must do something to uh, some, some import, uh, I, I have to discuss some important issue uh, to the, our country uh, because I have experienced that our country has been uh, uh, divided into pieces uh, like uh, racial, uh, religiously and ethnically. Irahandayata is the name of Ratnayaka's latest film. He was able to get necessary clearance from the authorities to film in the former conflict zones of the east, even while the last stages of war were raging in the jungles of the north. Like many other recent productions focusing on the conflict, his film reinforces the official position of it being a heroic battle against terrorism. <laughs> There have been other films that have done this as well. Somaratna Disanayake's film Saroja from 2002, for instance, shows sincere concern for the Tamil community, but in the end justifies the need for decades of war in order to eradicate terrorism and create the right environment for unity and harmony amongst the people. Not surprisingly, the film enjoyed great popularity amongst Sinhala audiences. So those are the uh, type of films that, uh, that were made during the past history and there were some other films also that were, these films are not very, I mean, popular among the uh, people in the country, especially the media uh, and those films were under attack. For an example, my films, uh, my film was under severe attack by the media and the normal uh, uh, people. But, you know, my issue and the, my focus was totally different from those films that you mentioned. Uh, my, I was worried about the repercussions and impact of war on, on the people. War for me is not, a, uh, not, uh, uh, not like a cricket match so that I can enjoy watching it. So it, it's a very painful experience. So I went through that pain. So I wanted to express that pain and it was painful to the society as well. So people were criticizing that thing. So I, I'm not against that. But only thing is you, ha you have to have a space to, I mean, uh, tell those issues also. Asoka Handagama belongs to a small group of filmmakers who have been critical about the war and its adverse effects on society. As a result, some of his films have not been considered suitable for screening. The reason being that they could have had a negative impact on the morale of the army and also the people when the war was at its peak. Prasanna Vithanage's Purahanda Kaluwara, with its portrayal of the impact of war on Sri Lanka's rural communities, suffered the same fate 
because of the belief it might negatively affect recruitment to the armed forces when the need for soldiers was on the rise. Now that the war is behind us, however, there may be more opportunities for diverse views to enter the world of cinema. Actually, this is a very, I mean, very critical period of time in our, I mean, uh, the country's history. You know, when this type of war, which prevailed for such a long period of time in, to the post-independent history of Sri Lanka, ended, it is very natural for people to have many things to say. So, and also it is very important for them to have a space to express themselves freely and independently without any influences. It is a sentiment that filmmakers like Ratnayaka subscribe to as well. I think my idea and my motto, my task is that I want to give good, good idea to the viewers that we don't want war and we have to live with very good understanding irrespective of the ethnic or religious or uh, racial differences. I think we need at present we, we need uh, such films. So I, I should not be the only filmmaker to do that. There are so many others. And though censorship is an issue that Sri Lankan filmmakers may yet not be able to put behind them, there is optimism that things could change for the better in the future. It is Asoka's opinion that the responsibility lies with the filmmaker to be bold and searching in his creations, despite any restrictions that may exist. In everywhere in the world, you don't have the complete, I mean, freedom uh, um, to, I mean, the government will not offer you the complete freedom to express you, I mean, express you freely. But it is up to you to find ways and it is, it is up to you to create a space, you know. Nobody will give you the thing. You have to create, you have to demand and you have to create. So it is the challenge that the filmmakers should face. And it, I mean, depending on that thing will be the future of the industry and future of the filmmaking as well. Artists are able to question reality and truth through their creative work. Perhaps it is time that everyone else tried to do the same. That's all we have time for today. If you have any comments, please let us know. Until next week, thanks for watching.